calling. Conservatives aren't calling for a willy-nilly boycott of every company that uh, virtue signals for Pride Month. No. This is how it works. This is an effective way to use our power, to harness our power as consumers in the marketplace, to remove from existence companies like Bud Light and Target that are so destructive to the fabric of our nation that we shouldn't spend a penny with them. This is how it works. You pick targets that have been especially egregious. Targets like Bud Light. What Bud Light did is, as we all agree, unforgivable. They embraced a transgender ideology and they tried to impose that, push that, force that into the faces of the, consu their consumers who are largely working class, right wing beer drinkers. This is so egregious. It's essentially like a re-education camp. They are, they're denying um, everything that they've claimed to be. They've claimed to be an American brand. They've claimed to be red, white, and blue. They've claimed to stand with, you know, fly over states. And this is what they're, what they're propagating, queer theory, would lead to the destruction of all of these people, these Christian people, these working people, these patriotic people. And they need to be taught a lesson. Then, listen, Bud Light did not apologize for what they did, and they're not going to, but what we are doing by squeezing Bud Light the way that we are squeezing, and what, is the, what are these numbers? I have these numbers here. Data from uh, Bump Williams Consulting and Nielsen IQ show that sales by volume at Bud Light are down 29.5%, and this is from OutKick, reported by OutKick. For the week ending in May 20th compared to last year, sales are down 25.7% for revenue compared to the same time window. This is a significant movement that we are driving. Because Bud Light might be too cowardly because they're worried about their CEI, their corporate equity index score, which plays into their ESG score. They might be too worried about that and bullying from the radical left to actually disavow Dylan Mulvaney. But what we are doing is we are setting the stage so that any company that engages in active propagandizing or activism aiming queer theory, theory at our children is going to have to say, well, wait a second. Wait a second, if we do this, are we just going to increase our ESG score or are we going to be actually ruined? Like, are we going to be, are we going to have the right point at us and say, bud light them if we behave like that? And Target has answered that question. Target has, what are we seeing with Target? Well, they've lost $10 billion in market value because they target our children, we are going to bud light them. So what we are doing is we are honing in on specific egregious targets and we are engaging our full energy against those specific targets. And when I say engaging our full energy, I mean, we aren't, we aren't using scattershot here. We are engaging our full energy at those specific targets to destroy those specific businesses and their LGBTQ propagandist activism, destroying them in the marketplace. And what's that going to do? It's going to discourage other companies. In fact, it's not just gonna discourage executives at other, at other companies who've um, propagated woke advertising are quaking in fear right, right now. You have no idea what it's like behind the scenes. The, the CEOs, the marketing teams, the advertising teams, they are shaking in their boots afraid that they're going to be next. Think about what happened to Miller Lite. That ad that we talked about about two weeks, on the, two weeks ago on the show, Miller Lite had that, that feminist, like women brew beer, that really stupid ad. And we were like, listen, you're lucky that we didn't notice that a couple months ago because right now we're busy with Bud Light. But Miller Light's statement when we spoke out about that and we said, Miller Light, you're walking on thin ice, thin ice, demonizing men and, and, and propagating this silly, woke, radical feminist narrative. Miller Light was like, guys, guys, it was just a joke. It was just a joke. You, you, you didn't understand the humor here. Come on, come on, guys. They were so afraid. They were panicked. Why? Because they didn't want what we've done to Bud Light to happen to them. So we're writing a playbook here. We're being very prudent about who we boycott. We're being extremely committed to these boycotts, seeing them to fruition, because what these companies are hoping for, what they're praying for, is that consumers forget, that consumers lose interest, that our passion dissipates, that they take a tiny little dip in the market while people are angry and then they recover, that we go back to Target next spring for our bathing suits, that we, at 4th of July, that we just have to crack open a cold Bud Light. They're hoping that we forget. And we're not gonna forget. We're not gonna stop. We're not gonna cave. We're not gonna bend a knee. We're going to identify our target and we're going to squeeze it, which is exactly what we're doing. So should we boycott Chick-fil-A? I don't know yet. I don't know, based just on this, 
listen, I'm not opposed to individuals on an individual basis saying, you know what, I don't want to shop at Kohl's if they're going to sell onesies for infants. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go to Chick-fil-A today if they're going to propagate DEI. That's fine. That's, that's individual boycotting. And I'm always in favor of that. If you want to do that, if you want to, if you want to spend your time shopping somewhere else at, at stores or eating at restaurants that actually do share your values, that's great. That's something that's admirable. I, I even encourage it, but that's different than the nationwide targeted corporate boycott that we are inflicting on Bud Light that we're inflicting on Target. We have not gotten to that point with Chick-fil-A yet. Doesn't mean that we won't. It doesn't mean we should dismiss what they're doing. It doesn't mean we shouldn't shame them and expose them and try to hold their feet to the fire. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't talk about them. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't warn them. It doesn't mean that they should feel safe. It doesn't mean that they should feel secure. It doesn't mean they should breathe a sigh of relief. It means they should be afraid. It means that they should they should seriously consider changing the way that they're acting because if they do keep going down this road, yeah, we will, we will boycott them. We will get them. But does it mean that we are going to have this willy-nilly boycott everything in the month of June? No, it doesn't. And those who, like Eric Erickson or like David French, who are acting as though that's what we are advocating for, don't understand what we're doing. They don't understand, and maybe the reason they don't understand what we're doing is because they don't acknowledge the reality of the political enemy that we're facing. If David French says diversity, equity, and inclusion are a good thing, Name to me one example when equity is a good thing. One example, because equity is just equal outcome. When has that ever, ever, ever been a moral thing? And even if you don't want to play that, that game, even if you don't want to trip him up in his own words, the definition of DEI as defined by the radical left, the Marxists on the left, is wrong. It's evil. It's incompatible with Christianity. And we all know that Target, or not Target, that Chick-fil-A has embraced the Marxist, the evil definition of DEI. And Eric Erickson, when he says, listen, if we don't, if we're not, uh, if we don't exercise discernment, people aren't going to take us seriously. Well, let me tell you, these corporations are taking us pretty seriously. When we've destroyed 25 to 30% of their market value, when $10 billion, um, when Target's lost $10 billion in less than two weeks, believe me, these people are taking us seriously. And yes, conservatives are responsible for starting and spearheading and being committed to these campaigns. Okay, we're going to talk about the Dodgers, the LA Dodgers, because finally, finally, some of the players in the MLB, at least, if not on the Dodgers, are speaking out strongly and calling for a boycott based on the anti-Christian hate group that the Dodgers are going to honor. Hi, guys. It's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app, or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.